Hi everybody, my name is Chris Delus. I'm a registered dietitian here at KSB Hospital. Um, as always, I like to thank um, KSB Community and Wellness for hosting these educational topics. Um, this month's nutrition topics is a part two of the sports nutrition um, presentation that I gave in July. So this is the second part to that where we will be talking about um, why nutrition matters. So kind of overviewing that again as we had discussed previously. <clears throat> we will talk about recovery nutrition, hydration to help support recovery, and then also just kind of point out any signs of poor recovery. So kind of red flags to look out for in your body um, as signs that we may be missing something kind of on the nutrition and hydration side of things. So again, starting with why nutrition matters. So nutrition is very important to just meet overall nutrition needs. Our body's main energy source is food. So we need calories, energy, food coming in to help support our body and, and for it to function normally. So when it comes to a sports nutrition setting, we are going to have increased needs when we have increased physical activity. So we want to make sure that we're eating to support those needs. We want to, again, support that activity load. Um, again, as we are training more, activity loads higher, energy needs are higher. We want to support recovery, body needs, calories, energy coming in to help with muscle repair, muscle building, um, and also store some of that energy in our muscles for next time. We want to prevent dehydration, so we want to make sure we're on top of um, fluid needs for day-to-day, -day, but also for sports specific so that we prevent any of the symptoms of dehydration. <clears throat> Fueling can also be used to help support or improve performance overall. So, right, similar to a car, we need gas in the car um, to help it run smoothly. So again, with sports, we need food or energy in our tank so that we can continue to um, um, move uh, well and perform at the, the level that we want to. We also want to prevent injury overall. So if we are in a place where we're not eating enough, um, we're not resting enough, we're not recovering well, that's going to put us at increased risk for injury and that's going to negatively impact our ability to engage in some of these um, sports or activities that we really want to. So some big ones for recovery nutrition kind of timing of intake. So we really want to make sure we're eating within 60 minutes of activity. This is our most kind of efficient time window for recovery. And that 60 minute window is predominantly coming from carbohydrates. So that muscle protein synthesis or muscle building process happens over 24 hours. So eating protein within activity isn't quite as critical as it is with eating consistently over 24 hours. Um, but the carbohydrates is actually that 60 minute window where our body is most efficient in kind of processing or using some of those carbohydrates and storing it in our muscles for next time. With that being said though, protein and carbs do work very symbiotically, so it is helpful to have both carbs and protein within that 60 minute window of activity. And then the three big R's of recovery would be something I would want you to remember or think about after activity. So first R is refuel. We want to incorporate carbohydrates to help support um, kind of rebuilding our muscles with glycogen or stored energy glucose for our next activity. We want to repair. So we want to incorporate some kind of protein rich food to help support that muscle protein synthesis system. We want to rehydrate. So we want to incorporate fluids and probably some kind of electrolyte to help replenish all of the fluids that were lost during activity, during kind of sweating and respiration. For hydration specific, so 
Um, we want to drink about 16 to 24 ounces of fluid for every 60 minutes of activity. So if we went and uh, played pickleball for two hours, we would want to have somewhere around 24, or sorry, 32 to 48 ounces of fluid. So we would just double that. Um, the best way for us to kind of monitor hydration status would be through our urine color. So if we kind of monitor that when we go to the bathroom, we are looking for a very light yellow, um, almost like a, a lemonade type color. If we are noticing either extreme, so very dark urine would be an indication we need more fluids. If we are noticing clear urine, all of the time that could be an indication that we're either over hydrating we're having too many fluids or we're not getting enough electrolytes so the second point here is adding in electrolytes if sweat rate is high one of the main electrolytes we are losing in our sweat is sodium or salt so we want to make sure that we have something salty following activity sodium plays a very important role in, in muscle contraction and just kind of fluid balance in our body so we want to make sure that we are incorporating electrolytes in some form following an activity, especially if we are sweating a lot. We also want to consider additional hydration or electrolytes if breathing rate is high in the winter. So even though we might not be sweating as much because the temperature is quite cold out, um, we actually lose a lot through respiration during that time. So fluid suggestions would be very similar um, in the winter as it is any other time after activity. And then signs of poor recovery. So this is a little diagram on relative energy deficiency in sport, red S for short. And these are all areas in which we can um, experience changes related to inadequate intake or we're not getting enough to support our activity load or recovery. So we can see changes in bone density. We can see changes in menstrual disorders, irregular periods, missed periods. Um, we can notice changes in, in GI tract, um, depression or eating disorders, um, endocrine disorders, metabolic disorders, anemia. Um, we can notice changes in cognition, whether that be, um, you know, change in focus, more irritability, not being able to concentrate, um, cog or sorry, <laughs> cardiovascular disorders, increased risk of injury reduced performance, recurring infection. So these could all be red flags to pay attention to with recovery, especially if we are um, changing our training load or increasing training load. If we are not eating in a way to match that or support that, these are all areas in our body that could be impacted by not getting enough food. So these would all kind of be red flags to pay attention to um, when we are changing activity load or as we are um, adding in more or adjusting training load. And then references. And then as always, if you do have any questions about the information covered today, please feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to help answer those questions further. And then be on the lookout for next month's nutrition topic with our other dietitian, Jade. Thank you.